For many West Indians, curry duck is not only a delicacy, it is a passion. It is the cornerstone of our food culture. Whether it's curry duck and white rice with rotani, a spicy condiment on the side, or curry duck with dal puris to chicken and peas dal, or alongside pilau, it is the main delicacy for limes and special occasions, including beach limes, river limes, where Trinis set up stove and makeshift kitchens on the banks of one of the many beautiful rivers in Trinidad. There are competitions around it and competitiveness among friends, family and neighbors on who makes the best curry duck. There are two types of ducks used for this particular dish in Trinidad. The first type is referred to as the local duck and then there's the farm duck. The local duck is smaller, more lean, which is mainly due to more movement and exercise in the yard. It is also further distinguished as the drake, the male and the hen, which is a female and is considered the sweeter meat of the two and a popular choice for many. The farm duck, on the other hand, is fattier and matures in four to six weeks. It's good for baking as well and cooks more quickly. After the duck is feathered, it is roasted to remove the remaining small feathers and roasting also imparts a very smoky and unique flavor to the duck. The duck is then cut up into small pieces and the organ meats and other parts of the duck are reserved for a special dish called pachowni. Nothing is wasted. After the meat is washed, it's seasoned with freshly ground Caribbean seasonings. Curries are mixed with precision, cooked in hot oil to awaken the flavors, and the meat is chunkade, which means that it is added to the hot oil to initiate the cooking process. Regardless of whether the curry duck is cooked in an indoor or outdoor stove, what makes this a memorable experience is not just the phenomenal taste of this dish, but the getting together with friends and families, the solidifying of relationships, the fun, the laughter, and the atmosphere of relaxation that all happens around this pot. Many of you requested this recipe, so a few weekends ago, I hung out with mommy and her friends and she was more than happy to share all the tips and tricks with you to help you make the ultimate curry duck, one that you, your family and friends will love. It's easy and absolutely delicious and I hope you give this one a try. Hi. 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 The first step in making duck is finding the duck. I picked this up at Liberty Avenue in Queens and it wasn't roasted, so the next step would be to roast it thoroughly until it's nice and charred. An old outdoor stove is always recommended because of the mess involved and the potential for very large flames when that fat hits the fire. Please do not attempt this on an indoor stove and always follow the necessary safety precautions when working with open flame. Easier way is to purchase the duck already roasted. You can ask them specifically to have the duck roasted and they'll probably do so with a blowtorch. Auntie Shure, my mom's best friend in Trinidad, makes an absolutely delicious curry duck as well but she wraps her duck in newspaper for roasting. At this point, it is recommended to scrub off all the charred areas because it's so much easier to do it now than after cutting up the meat, as you will see later on. Next, cut the meat into any size you prefer. In my family, we cut it very small. Seeing my husband cut up this duck reminds me of the very first time he took me to his home to meet his mom back in Trinidad when we were dating. I was 17, he was 18. The first thing she did was she gave him a duck to roast and to cut up. So he roasted it and then he sat on a pira, which is a wooden stool, and then he cut it up meticulously 
into very small pieces. He gave her the duck to cook and then he went into the backyard, climbed up a coconut tree, picked a fresh green coconut, sliced it open, poured the coconut water into a glass and then gave me the jelly to eat. And when she was done cooking, she brought out a plate and he fed me a delicious meal of curry duck, dal and rice. Spoon after delicious spoon, it was love at first bite. 30 years later, curry duck, peas dal and dal puri is the very first meal she serves us when we land in Trinidad. And that, my friends, is a true curry duck love story. And now let's get back to the task at hand, cutting up this duck, and I can share some important tips with you. The first thing you'll need is a sharp chopper or cleaver. If it's dull, it's going to make your life a living hell, and if it's not heavy enough, it's going to be even more difficult. You'll also need a heavy-duty wooden or plastic chopping board and I recommend plastic because a wooden board increases your risk of bacteria and a plastic is just easier to clean. You'll also need a sturdy table or surface. You don't want anything that's moving or shaking. And the most important tip of all is there should be no distractions. You need to be mindful and pay attention and this is definitely not the time to zone out. Now that we've completed the most difficult part of this entire process, let me show you how to wash the meat to remove any freshness and gaminess. Mommy highly recommends that you use flour to wash the meat and I've started here with a quarter cup and I'll add more later on. Inside of the back area, you'll see the backbone there. Pull this out from the back to expose the backbone. So this is it and the back is now clean. We remove this from the back. And you're scraping off to remove any feathers, checking for any feathers. Another back area. I'm going to remove the that stuff that's inside the back. I don't know what it's called, but it needs to go. So you're scraping to remove any burnt bits, the burnt charred area. And you're also scraping to remove any feathers. Any excess fat. A 
as I mentioned before, it's more efficient to remove the charring or scrape off the charring after the duck has been roasted and cooled right before you cut it up into small pieces. The roasting gives it a nice smoky flavor. Again, this is the back area and this bright red stuff that's inside. And we're removing that. And that's it. It's much easier to clean than the chicken. Okay, and now we'll rinse it with, um, when we're done, we'll rinse it with flour and then a lime to continue to remove any freshness and then we'll season. I'm adding another half cup of flour. And mommy says we don't use too much lime in this because it gives it a bitter taste. That's why we're using flour. Soak it for a little bit and we'll rinse it a couple more times until it's nice and clean. There's a big piece of fat here. We'll do this to remove any charred bits and any excess flour. It will drain directly in the sink. Now we'll just squeeze half a lime onto the duck and rinse it very quickly. And rinse it off one more time. It looks nice and clean. It smells nice and clean. Next, we'll make the green seasoning by mincing all these ingredients in a food processor or blender. And if you don't have either of those, a mortar and pestle will work. I have three leaves of pudina, also known as broadleaf thyme, eight leaves of bandania, a couple of pimento peppers, a handful of garlic, hot pepper, thyme and scallions. Thank you. 
Now we'll reserve a quarter cup of the green seasoning for cooking with the curry and we'll season the duck with the remainder, which is about a half cup in total. Himalayan salt, black pepper. What is that? Next, I'll season the duck with curry powder, cumin, black pepper, and salt. And I always get mixed up with the cumin and the achar masala because they look almost identical. Now, we'll give it a good stir and allow it to marinate for a minimum of one hour or overnight covered in the refrigerator. added an extra tablespoon of curry powder here because it seemed a little scant and in mommy's seasoned duck it was very evident. To cook the curry you'll need six tablespoons of oil, one teaspoon of whole jeera also known as cumin and a half teaspoon of meiti seeds also called fenugreek seeds. These are totally optional if it's not available in your supermarket. You'll also need a quarter onion slice and hot pepper according to your preference. You'll also need two tablespoons of regular curry powder and two tablespoons of duck and goat curry powder. And if you don't have this in your supermarket, you can find it in Liberty Avenue in Queens or I'll leave a link for it below. A quarter cup of the green seasoning, which I already mentioned. Curry leaves, which you could find in any yard in Trinidad or in Liberty Avenue, Queens. It's not something I usually find, but I was very lucky last weekend. You'll also need a tablespoon of achar masala, and you can find that and anything else I've used in this video, including the stove, via the Kitchen Favorites link below. Now with all the notes and advice I received from Mommy, let's start cooking! I've heated the oil in a heavy bottom pot over moderate heat. I've added the meiti seeds and the cumin seeds and I will toast it until it's brown about 30 seconds. I'll add the curry leaves and allow it to fry for another 30 seconds. I once heard someone say that curry leaves taste like curry but that wasn't my experience. If you've ever chewed on a raw curry leaf let me know below what you thought it tasted like. We will cook until it becomes very fragrant and aromatic, which just means that it smells amazing. The meiti and the cumin seeds have darkened and have achieved their full potential. And now I'll add the onion and hot pepper and cook until the edges are brown. I'm reducing the heat to low to prevent it from burning or browning too quickly. Low and slow is sometimes the best way to go. Real home cooking is certainly not for the impatient. Next I'll add the duck and goat curry powder and the regular curry powder. And I'm not adding any turmeric today because this curry powder appears to be very yellow, which means it contains a lot of turmeric. Today I'm trying the Indi brand of curry powder, which is mommy's favorite nowadays. We'll cook the curry, stir in constantly until it's grainy and fragrant. Next, I'll add water. It smells really fragrant. The curry is very strong. And the aroma of the pepper and the onions and the curry leaves are coming across.
We're building the flavors here. Now I'm going to add some green seasoning that we reserved. I'm going to cook this about three to five minutes until it becomes grainy and even more fragrant. I'm going to add a little more water to continue the curry cooking process. Smells pretty awesome already. I'm gonna raise the heat to high, medium. Once you see nothing is happening, you raise the heat. If too much is happening, if it's smoking, if it's sticking, you lower the heat. We're creating a lovely, aromatic, flavorful curry base for the duck, which has been seasoned and marinated already for a couple of hours so there will be flavor on every level you're starting to see that the oil is separating from the curry this is exactly what you want the color has darkened and it's bubbling vigorously. The curry is toasting, becoming even more aromatic. Now that it's beginning to stick to the pot, to the bottom of the pot, I'll add the duck, the seasoned duck. I'm raising the heat to high and I'll stir to combine the meat with all the delicious toasted flavors. I'll cook it, stirring constantly for about five minutes. I'll put the cover on and then allow it to cook in its own juices. I'm reducing the heat to low because it's ticking. I'm going to place the cover on. I'm just checking to see if it's sticking, but it's beginning to release its own juices, which is a good sign. So I'll just return the cover and allow it to continue to cook. It's been about five minutes and I'm gonna check again and stir and cover. Stirring is the secret. You're stirring to baste it as well as to ensure that it's not sticking. It looks really yummy already, but the meat is still raw, so there's no tasting yet. 
I'm gonna return the cover and I'll check it again in five to ten minutes. I've been checking it every five to ten minutes for the past 20 minutes. The liquid is evaporating or almost completely evaporated. I'm going to allow it to cook down for a couple minutes more. Once it starts to stick, we'll get the hot water ready and we'll add hot water to the pot. I've raised the heat to medium to expedite the evaporation of the liquid in here. Once again, the oil is beginning to separate from the curry, which is another indication that we're getting ready for the next step in the process. Once this liquid evaporates and if the duck is still not tender enough, you'll continue to add water until it's your desired uh, doneness. I'm going to scrape up the bits at the bottom. Reduce the heat to low since it's already come to a boil. The heat is on the lowest. And now I'm going to cover and cook it for about 20 to 30 minutes more or longer if needed. Test for salt. I forgot to add the atar masala, so I'm adding it now. At this point, you could test to see how tender the duck is. Luckily, my duck is really tender, so it's only a matter of allowing this liquid to evaporate and then the duck will be done. I'm also adding a teaspoon more of salt. It's been cooking for about an hour now. The aroma is so enticing. The color is so vibrant and beautiful. I smell a little touch of the pepper and all the spices are coming through. I'm going to give it a taste for salt. Mm. It's a party in my mouth right now. It's really delicious. You can choose to leave a little bit of sauce in it or cook it down dry. I'm going to test it to see how tender it is right now and see if it needs more cooking. The sauce is thick and rich and very tasty. The aroma is filling up the neighborhood. I've tested it and it's tender enough for me. I don't like my duck too soft. This is not chicken. This needs to have a little bite to it and a little slight toughness. And that's my preference. You may like it very soft. It's up to you again. So that's it for me. And this pot is ready and we are ready to eat. Uh, we have our rice and dal ready and it's going to be a great dinner. That's it my friends. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed being in the kitchen today with me. Or learn something new. Share this video with your family, friends and social media community. Subscribe if you wish to be a part of the Cooking with Ria family. Tag me on any pics if you try any of my recipes. Until next time, cook, share, love, and be safe. Bye-bye.